Hello and welcome back to another revision video regarding early Elizabethan England on key topic one, Queen, Government and Religion from 1558 to 1569. This video is going to focus on part two, which is to do with the religious settlement. Today's content is going to cover the religious divisions in England in 1558. Elizabeth's religious settlement in 1559 regarding its features and its impact and it's also going to look at the role of the Church of England in society. In terms of the religious settlement we are looking at the idea of a religious seesaw in terms of a compromise between the Catholics and the Protestants when Elizabeth became Queen in 1558. In terms of the religious divides in England in 1558, there was quite a significant opposition from the clergy in that most bishops in 1558 were Catholic and many ended up changing their religion to keep their jobs, but some would not agree to work in a Protestant church. In terms of the geographical divisions, the map on the right hand side will show the differences in areas of support with regards to strong Catholic areas situated in the north and northwest of England and stronger Protestant support in East Anglia, the southeast and London. In addition to that, there are connections to the southeast with regards to other countries in Europe at the time that were Protestant, for example, the Netherlands and Germany. We also have to make sure that we view the Puritans, which we'll do in a lot more detail in part three. Um, but as a summary for the Puritans is that they want to purify the Christian religion by getting rid of anything that wasn't in the Bible. They wanted to manage their own churches rather than run by bishops and dioceses. And the idea of making churches and services very, very basic without such equipment like altars or special clothes for priests. So the religious settlement was a compromise between elements of Protestantism and elements of Catholicism. So let's have a look at some of the features. So the first act of the first one is the Act of Supremacy, which made Elizabeth the Supreme Governor of the Church of England, removing the Pope as the head of the church, but not putting Elizabeth as the head of the church. It's a slight change in language. But it was a compromise to stop her being related to Henry VIII, who placed himself as the head of the Church of England in 1536. In addition to the name change, um, all, all clergy, so that's everyone that worked in the church, had to swear an oath of allegiance to Elizabeth. The second act was the Act of Uniformity, which uh, looked at the establishment of the appearance of the church and what form services would, would undertake. So the Book of Common Prayer was to be used in all churches, but the language within the Act of Uniformity was incredibly vague and open to interpretation. It also led to everyone having to attend church on a Sunday and other holy days, for example, Good Friday and Easter Sunday, and there were large fines for those that refused to attend. In addition to the to the to the acts, there were royal injunctions, which were basically a set of instructions that were to enforce the acts of supremacy and uniformity. So anyone that was a recusant, those, those that refused to attend church would be reported to the Privy Council and the clergy were ordered to wear special clothing. In terms of the impact of the religious settlement, the impact on the clergy was that around about 8,000 priests took up the oath of supremacy, which would be considered to be a success. However, further up the hierarchy of clergy, so where we look at the bishops, out of 28 who, out of 28 bishops in England at the time, only one took the oath regarding the act of supremacy. Therefore, what happened was all 27 of those had to resign, and Elizabeth had to appoint 27 new bishops, all of whom were Protestant. In terms of the people, the majority of people accepted the settlement in the sense that they didn't really see much change from previous years. The new word in the Bible, as stated earlier, allowed different interpretations to incorporate Catholic and Protestant faiths. And in terms of the geographical differences, there were places in the north that were slower to accept the changes, whereas Protestants in the south were too enthusiastic about changes 
which led to some burnings of certain churches um, and dissolution of certain monasteries. So it's important at this time to consider the role of the, of the Church of England in society. It's one of the key pillars of society. Um, and in terms of its role, it was able to control what was preached to the masses. So, for example, those that worked in the, worked in the clergy, those worked in the church, certainly with regards to priests, they required a special license from the government to preach in their particular area. But Elizabeth could ensure that clergy preached her religious and political messages through the idea of the act of uniformity. In addition to being able to control people in the, in the local area, they were able to give guidance to communities. So, for example, people that, that uh, suffered hardship during this period of time would often turn to the church for help. They also ran church courts where they would decide on minor disputes such as, such as marriage, certain sexual offences and slander. Uh, for example, slander would be where someone says something about you that is untrue. The church would rule, with, would rule on, on that particular crime. It also was the role of the church to enforce the religious settlement. So, for example, there were visits to churches by bishops to ensure that they were acting in accordance with the settlement. And due to these visits in the early years, after, after visitations in 1559, 400 clergy were dismissed for not following the act of supremacy or the act of uniformity. The church also legitimized power to the monarch in that the religion that was taught during the Tudor period was always mirrored by the views and beliefs of the monarch herself. So in summary, Elizabeth was a Protestant queen, but England was not completely a Protestant country due to the geographical divisions. London and South East and East Anglia were more Protestant with those in the North of England more likely to be supporters of Catholicism. The religious settlement came in three parts with regards to the Acts of Supremacy, which was to do with the idea of swearing an oath to Queen Elizabeth, the Acts of Uniformity with regards to how the church and services looked like, and the Royal Injunctions, which were the instructions particularly on what was inside the church and the instructions on how to conduct services. The change into the religious settlement was slow in some places, particularly in those areas that were strictly Catholic. And lastly, visitations enforced the religious settlement, but Elizabeth ordered them not to be too harsh. That's the end of this video. The next episode is on the reactions to the religious settlement, including challenges from Puritans and Catholics. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and the next episode will be uploaded shortly.